Today we're gonna have one of the most sad stories of StarCraft II esports. It's a story about greed and pursuit of large amount of money. The impact on the scene was horrifying. Dozens of people lost their jobs, StarCraft II took a huge blow and it never really recovered from it. It all happened in South Korea 2015. StarCraft II was still doing relatively well, there were a lot of high skill players and even Brood War legends such as Jadong and Flash were actively competing. Despite that Hot of the Swarm expansion had a lot of problems and led to a decrease in the player base, StarCraft II was still amongst the most popular esports games, at least in those times. Also, Legacy of the Void was just around the corner, it would improve the state of the game and boost the scene with new players and viewers. However, not all people and even players shared this optimistic image of the future days. For some of them it seemed like StarCraft 2 is dying and it will only get much worse in the next few years. But there was another thing that was growing rapidly during that time, it was esports betting. The first bet sign happened during the Sun vs Dark match. Pinnacle Sports, an online betting website, released a statement about voiding all bets on them due to suspicious manipulation. It seemed like the betting line was moving too strangely, as if somebody had inside information, for example a build order that might work well, or if the game was just meant to be a throw. But the worst part about the betting, it was done before the actual match, so somebody knew something prior to the competition. There was an imposter. Only three days later, Pinnacle Sports voided all bets on the 2015 JSL Season 1 Codex match between Innovation and Super. It was later confirmed that betting lines for the first map had rapidly changed shortly before the match started. This again indicated that somebody had inside information. And a few days later, on February 8, 2015, the organizer of the weekly online cup series, Ali Malik, as well as the manager of the team Axiom, Olimali released multiple tweets stating that illegal online betting had massive influence on the Korean StarCraft 2 scene. She claimed that multiple online tournaments were sponsored by gamblers, who in return were allowed to watch the matches as in-game observers through the StarCraft 2 client, thus surpassing the delay on live streams and getting an advantage over other bettors. She furthermore released a list of tournaments allegedly sponsored by these gamblers. It compromises small online tournaments, usually featuring a price pool of $1 to $2,000. In the following days, several tournament organizers such as sc 2 improve and Poggy, for example, released statements about the issue. But on the other hand, Total Biscuit, the owner of Axiom team, stated that it is unknown whether any match was actually fixed, and he pointed out that Korean pro gamers very often get approached for doing exactly that. For example, there was a rumor that Solar was approached with an offer, but he fortunately declined. Additionally, Alimali accused unnamed players of helping the gamblers as well as Blizzard for not taking action against it despite being informed several times. Other people in the StarCraft 2 scene contrary said that Blizzard were actually investigating. So, as you can see, the situation was very tense. The most suspicious match happened two months later. According to betting odds and most S2 viewers, Soul Key, the Zerg player, was the favorite to win his 2015 JSL Season 2 Code A match against Creator. The latter, however, was heavily favored by bets to win the first map, in this case, King Sidron Station. And indeed, Soki lost that map, but he went on to win the complete series with a score of 1 to 3. Another suspicious match happened between Bial and Marine King, where the latter just refused to acknowledge the existence of a proxy hatchery. This drone is just sitting here. There we go, Spinecrawler. Oh, oh that Reaper is so close yeah, to scouting see, it. He sees it. Oh. Well, if he sees it, he could actually just. Why wouldn't you shoot at it? Right click down that Spinecrawler. Maybe he wants to make him think he doesn't know. Wait. Yeah, he literally sees it. Maybe he just wants to make him think he doesn't know. Well, I think at this point you could just simply kill it and, like, delay everything and win the game with Reapers. Okay, now he realizes. <laughs> I think he may just simply not have seen it. Well, I think what? he still hasn't seen it. It's a big problem here. I don't actually understand. He's That's going on into the minimap straight up. Yeah, I mean, it's straight up his, man. There's a red dot there. Maybe if, he if he was trying to hide the fact that he saw it so he could crush it or something weird like that, which doesn't even really make that much sense, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate, he definitely wouldn't be making a reactor on his barracks no, right now. No, he's going into Hellions from here. He, he has what? no idea, man. That is not a useful sort of thing at this point. Uh, well, there's still enough transfusers to keep it alive for now, but he's going to want these Zerglings to get a good surround or at least come in and try and help. Just yeah. a moment. That's a lot of damage from these spines, actually. I think you might actually see game. Yeah, it looks like too it. Much. You can just start targeting with the queens as well. And, uh, you know, he's barely, barely holding on, but he's just getting worn down. He's going to lose his add-on in just a second. 
And he's not even making anything, in fact, even though he has the money. Uh, oh, look at his face. He's so angry right now. <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. This is not a game you should lose, especially if you scout it. So this is like, this is a crazy game, but this is like the type of game I would not want to recommend to anybody. Oh, this is the game that this <laughs> game just makes <laughs> me sad. the Zerglings as well. This makes me sad, in fact. Oh, this is just a critical mistake, man. This is like, it's so out there that Marine King didn't even think to check or, or realize what was going on until Creep was in his main base. Yeah, I mean, this is also like, quite frankly, uh, a lack of map awareness as well. I mean, that was on his mini-map, yellow. As day, that was red, red, in, red, in, yeah, day, red and day is in his view. Um, well, that's gonna be it. I mean, Marine King leaves games late. He's got a bunker trying to get up here. Bill takes a sip of water, takes hands off the keyboard. Is that yep? GG. Wow. This whole situation negatively affected the reputation of the Korean Starcrafter scene as well as Kespa. Even though there was no proof, at least so far, it still made many people as well as sponsors question the integrity of the Korean pro scene. So on May 7th, 2015, Kespa released an official statement regarding recent match fixing allegations. They claim that there have been attempts to fix matches, but the players who were approached by brokers declined the offers. Or did they? Additionally, that incident had been reported to the police, and several brokers were arrested and Kespa was stepping up its efforts to combat manipulations. Also, they asked the fans to not make any inappropriate accusations to players, because of course it damaged their reputation. This statement was released only hours after Korean media had reported that Soul Key might be involved in match fixing. Soul Key had been approached by a broker, but fortunately declined the offer. After the broker had lost his money, he felt threatened by his investor and asked the police for help. In the following investigations, Solki was questioned just as a witness. So it seemed like everybody could finally breathe out and relax. However, it was only the beginning of a large-scale drama. Kespa perhaps was aware of potential risks and that battles wouldn't just go away. Starting from July 2007, 2015, Sport TV removed the in-game clock from their Pro League broadcasts to counteract illegal betting and match fixing. This was done after bets on certain time-based events, for example, no unit dies until minute 5, had gained more popularity in illegal online gambling in Korea. The removal of an official clock makes it a lot harder for bookmakers and gamblers to track these bets. Finally, it looked like the issues were sorted out. Casper's reputation is safe and StarCrafter should get a new spike of popularity very soon with the release of Legacy of the Void expansion. But at the same time, there was a special investigation ongoing. And on October 19, they were ready to publish their results. It turned out that match-fixing thing was a lot bigger than people expected. Three people were the main suspects, Gerard, Bong Bong and Yoda, all three from the Team Prime. Additionally, one extra gamer, nicknamed Enough, and four brokers and two financial backers had been arrested as well. It was a shock for the whole scene. There were similar events in Brood War, but it was the first time when a coach would be tied with much fixing. What was even more surprising, Yoda, a very successful player who even won IM one time, was also doing the match fixing. Subsequently, Casper announced that Yoda, Bonbon, and Jared were banned for life. They also announced that they would pursue legal measures against the alleged match fixers and that they would keep a philosophy of zero tolerance towards illegal gambling and manipulation of matches. The report lists five matches which had been manipulated. It's highlighted that a manipulation can be an intentional loss or going over or under a certain time regardless of a result or other similar ways. It was not released how each match had specifically been manipulated, and we still don't know exactly what was wrong with some of these games, yet the match fixing is certain due to other pieces of evidence. The official prosecutor's report reveals that Gerard had been approached by brokers in different ways. Some acted as sponsors and provided operating funds for the team to earn his trust. Korean media reported that Prime and Gerard were in serious financial trouble, and players had their salaries withheld. More specifically, Enough used his connections as former pro gamer, journalist and broadcast host to approach Gerard and Yoda. Yoda sometimes dealt with the brokers directly, and sometimes through Gerard. Eventually, it was reported that sentencing was passed down on everyone involved in the match-facing scandal, including former Prime members Gerard, Yoda and Bong Bong who were sentenced to 18 months of prison on 3 years suspension each. They also had to pay a big fine. This was a huge blow that severely damaged Casper's reputation, as well as the whole Korean pro scene. 
Now every strange or suspicious match could be possibly viewed as match fixing, and every underdog victory would create a speculation talk about possible frauds. At this point, it was still possible to restore the reputation and attract new sponsors, since every suspect was caught red handed and the matter was fixed. However, there were some rumors about ongoing investigations and even Wolf hinted that there is more to this story. The peaceful times lasted only 3 months. On January 29, 2016, the best player of the entire StarCraft 2, both in Korea and world, was arrested for receiving money for match fixing. It was life, a living legend at that time. I actually made a proper video on him and the match fixing scandal and you should definitely check it out since it complements the story perfectly. Link will be in the description. Alongside Life, another player, Byung, was charged for match fixing. In total, four players and one coach were banned and sentenced for their crimes. And if the scandal with Prime team members didn't really inflict so much damage, Life's case was different. Life was just too big of a person to do such kind of things. At the moment he was caught, he had won almost half a million dollars and 10 premier tournaments. He was the world champion, the symbol of StarCraft II esports. And that's absolutely heartbreaking. With Life's fall, the reputation of the whole scene was completely shattered. The match fixers and Life especially were hated for what they'd done. The consequences were dire. A couple of months later, after Life had been sentenced, five Korean teams disbanded and reported that they had financial troubles to keep on going. Due to reputation damage, most sponsors were seriously considering pulling out of StarCraft 2, as they didn't want to support a scene with so much betting and match fixing. Effectively, this meant Korean StarCraft 2 died that year. Pro League closed down roughly at the same time after the last season, and for most teams there was even less incentive to keep big rosters. The only tournament that remained in South Korea was the GSL, and it was already stacked with top competitors. It was very hard for a, let's say, weak player to squeeze in. To make things even worse, Europe and North America introduced region locks and players from South Korea couldn't participate literally anywhere except for the one Premier Tournament and Online Cups, which was, of course, not enough for the whole player base. As a result, all the players who were not able to consistently take spots in GSL Codes had only one choice – to retire. With no new teams, sponsors and events, it was too hard to compete. StarCraft 2 became a way less attractive game for newcomers in the Asian region. All at the same time when League of Legends was stinking rich with loads of money, teams and sponsors. So basically, five guys destroyed the careers and hopes of dozens of other people. StarCraft 2's reputation was ruined, South Korea's pro scene was dying and the future was very grim. As you know, the game of course managed to recover thanks to free-to-play, but the same couldn't be said about South Korea. The region never managed to return to its former glory. This is it for our story. Don't forget to check out Life's Perspective to get more details about this match fixing scandal. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, don't forget to subscribe and press the like button. Have a nice day and see you next time.